You have finally finished working on your pictures. Now you may want to print them. You might want to upload them to a website, email them, or perhaps even use them as part of a slideshow. So that means you've got to resize your images. So in this video, I thought I'd show you the workflow that I use for resizing a picture. Best of all, we're going to create this as a macro, which will really help to speed up your workflow. Let's make a start. Now, first things first, I do not like to touch this. This is what I term as being my main copy. I do not want to take pixels out of it to make it smaller. I do not want to put pixels into it to make it bigger or even sharpen it. I want to keep it exactly as it is. So this is where we're going to make a duplicate copy and we're going to do it using a snapshot. If your snapshot panel isn't open, head up to window. Coming down, there it is, Snapshot. While we're here, we're going to go to Macro. Let's open that panel back over to our Snapshot. Click on this icon to add a Snapshot. Call it something like Final, Finished, whatever you want. Click on it so it is now highlighted. Once it's highlighted, come up to this little icon, which is New Document from Snapshot. Here's our new document, Untitled. Takes a few seconds just to fall into place. You can now close the original down. That is now safely out of the way. Let's record a macro. We're going to head over to the red spot for start recording. First thing I want to do is flatten all of these layers into one layer. Document down the bottom. We've got flatten. Just wait in a few seconds. All of those layers have now gone into one pixel layer to resize it. Document again. Resize document. Now I'm going to use this for a print, so I'm going to convert the units to inches. If you're using it for website use, if you're using it for email, perhaps slideshow, you might want to keep it in pixels. So I'm going to change this to inches, but if you're comfortable using millimeters, centimeters, choose whichever one you want. Once you've done this, notice IN or it could be PX or, or whatever the measurement you've chosen will show here. I'm going to drop this down in size to 12 inches. No need to press IN, no need to adjust the height, because as soon as you press enter or return, because it is linked, the height is done for us and IN has gone in as well. DPI 350, perhaps just a little bit too much. Now for a print, I prefer to use 300, but if you're using this for website use, if you're using it for email slideshow, 72 pixels per inch is absolutely fine. So let's put in a 300. Don't forget to press enter or return. Right, resampling. Lansos 3 is separable. I tend to use the separable or non-separable, yet to find a difference between the two. Down the bottom, description, 12 by 8 at 300 dpi. There's the pixel dimension as well. We can now click on resize. Now, I mentioned that I don't like to sharpen an image. Now, I prefer to sharpen it at the finished image size. So if you're going to create a print, you might want to go for a larger print. That is going to require greater sharpening. If you go for something for web use, that is going to require less sharpening. So what I prefer to do is head over to my live filter and we can scroll down. We're going to go with unsharp mask. It's attached itself as a child to our layer, which is fine. I'm going to put in, I always use one pixel. The factor, this is what's going to vary. Zoom in to 100% and just take it up. You just give a rough idea perhaps something like this but don't worry we can adjust this and I'll show you just a little bit later. Next we're going to zoom back out again because now we're going to put an outline around our image. It's now saying select parent layer because don't forget this is a child. Now we're selecting the parent clicking select. It's telling me what I can't do so I'm going to click cancel. Coming down to FX let's go to outline Make sure you tick it so it is live. Outside needs to be inside so you can see it. Black, no, we're going to choose whatever color we want, but I'm going to go with white to start off with. Let's take the radius up and you can see it now coming around the outside and clicking close. You can also add adjustment layers. The only one you cannot change when you come to adjust it is levels. 
but I tend to go for something simple like HSL or perhaps even Vibrance, just giving it a little bit of Vibrance, just so we can see it. We're gonna head back to Document. We're gonna go down to Flatten. That's gonna put it back into one layer. At this stage, we can now stop recording. And these are the steps that we've used, but let's take a look. We're gonna go down to the History panel. I'm gonna rewind history. So we're now back with all of our layers. Click the play button. This is now going to shoot through and how quick and easy was that? Let's rewind history again. So we've now in layers. Now we're going to edit all of the settings we've put in by coming to the gear clock where it says edit. Radius, which I always leave at one pixel. So I'm not going to touch this. However, factor, yes, we can change. So click on the eye icon. This dialog box opens. Just put the cursor here and I'm going to type in USM for unsharp mask. Press enter or return to apply it. We don't need to come to this particular one, but let's head down to edit color. Click on the eye icon because you might want to change the color. And I'm going to click just before the word color and put in outline. Coming down to the next one. Clicking on the eye icon again, once again, clicking just before radius and putting in what it is because that really helps outline. Finally, down to this particular one, vibrance. And if we just put in a bit of a, an abbreviation and sat for that, we need to go back to it because it also had saturation and we don't want to leave that out sat. Now let's see what happens when we click play. Through it goes, but this dialog box opens up as well. This is where we can adjust things. You can see the titles we put in, so you can see exactly what it's going to do. Zoom into 100% for your unsharp mask, and just a small amount of adjustments. Just take it up and you can see, that's not too bad. Looking around the image around here in particular, I'm gonna leave it like that. Zooming back out outline a little bit too bright let's just move this in a fraction perhaps something like this just wait in a few seconds and you can see the way it's toned down just a little bit brighter it's just losing itself in the clouds right the outline i'm going to take this up i'm going to put in 20 just press enter or return very quickly you can see that's now made it wider Vibrance there, taking that up a little bit more. That looks good, leaving the saturation. Click and apply, that's now going to finish off. It's gonna put it down into one layer. Let's take a look at the size. Document, resize document. There are the document dimensions and we've done it for 12 inches. It's going to be a print. So now what I tend to do is come up to this icon here to add it to my library. Choose the category. I'm just going to go with default. Enter a name for your macro. I'm going to put in 12 inch. What I am doing with it, which is a print. What I also put in is L. This just stands for landscape. I put P for portrait. Now that we've done that, we can click on OK. Right, we've now headed over to our library. That opened up automatically. Right, just heading back to macro. Let's clear this for the moment. So coming down to the bottom, you can see there it is. First of all, rewind history, nearly forgot. Click on this, this is gonna go through. There's all the bits and pieces we put in. I'm simply gonna click apply. There it is, it's now raced to the end. If we come to this one, right click, you can rename it, you can delete it, you can also edit it. If you edit it, you come back over into the macro. Don't particularly want that, and I'm gonna right click and choose delete. You can see just how quick and easy it is once you've set it up for the different sizes that you need, a click of a button, job done, and it really does speed up your workflow. So go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come. And if you click that little bell icon, you receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.